Your forbearance is, uh, is commendable. I, uh, this has to be an emotional moment for you, the family, for the congressman, for all of you, congressman. Thanks for the passport into your district. Appreciate it. And the, the uh, I want to also thank uh, everyone here that uh, took the time to be here. And uh, you know, um, one of the things back in the 1900s, Dawson Springs uh, was uh, a place where people came to be healed because of the mineral waters. Literally, it was a place you came to heal. Now it's our turn to help the entire town to heal. You know, I, uh, I granted the request for the first emergency uh, declaration and, uh, and major disaster declaration the moment I received it, because I got to know the governor's father, and I knew nothing would come and wasn't real. I mean it, for real. And, uh, you know, yesterday I also approved an emergency declaration for the state of Illinois and Tennessee. And I intend to do whatever it takes, as long as it takes, as long as it takes, to support your state, your local leaders, and for as you recover and rebuild, because you will recover and you will rebuild. You know, uh, the scope and scale of this destruction is almost beyond belief. When you look around here, it's just almost beyond <clears throat> belief. These tornadoes devoured everything in their path. And, you know, as I flew over here in the helicopter, you can look down and you see a house 20 yards away from a house that's devastated and the house is in good shape. I mean, it's just tornadoes are such devastating storms. Back where I'm from, we're used to hurricanes and floods and high water, but the, these tornadoes are just something totally different. And they're not, you devoured, it devoured everything in the path, your homes, your businesses, your houses of worship, your dreams, your lives. And you know, the governor confirmed there, I think you said 74 fatalities so far, Gov, in Kentucky, and, and uh, making these among the deadliest tornadoes to ever strike this state. Almost 14 people are confirmed dead in other states, with dozens of people still, still fearful of where, where they are. I met one, I, won't, I don't have permission to use their name, but I met one couple on the way up said they're still looking for four of their friends. They don't know where they are. And those who have lost someone, there's no words for the pain of losing someone. A lot of us know it. A lot of us understand it, especially around the holidays when everything's supposed to be happy and joyful. It was a long time ago. I got a phone call around the holidays and found out that my, I was in Washington as a young senator, not sworn in yet, about to be uh, hiring staff. And I got a call saying from a first responder that uh, there had been an accident. A tractor trailer broadside of my wife with a Christmas tree on top and my three kids inside. My wife and daughter are dead. But my mother, God love her, used to always say, out of everything terrible, something good will happen. Something ha good has to happen out of this. It just can't be all bad. We've got to make it better. And so, folks, those who have lost someone know, know how tough it is. And you know how tough it is. You know, in Mayfield, just hours before the storm, we just came from Mayfield, the Gibson Pharmacy had uh, been full of families with children waiting to meet Santa. Now it's completely gone. And so many businesses are vital to the community have been so damaged and destroyed, and your town as well. There's a saying in small towns, people know about it when you're born, and they care about it when you die. They know about it when you're born, and they care about it when you die. Well, in so many places, destruction was met with compassion. Neighbors and first responders racing to help and save each other's lives and support. I mean, I asked, I, I'm not joking, I asked when I got to Mayfield what the first thing my first, my first responders, FEMA, and, the, and what, what they heard. They said they were amazed. All they heard was about people just going out helping one another. Everybody, everybody, just stepping up. It's incredible. It's incredible how you all step up. And so, folks, you know, uh, uh, the fact is I'm going to make sure the federal government uh, steps up and makes sure we do every single thing. For years and years, as a U.S. Senator and then as Vice President, we I come from Delaware. We have a lot of serious storms, hurricanes, oceans rising, a whole range of things. But you know what? It always took a long time. There's no reason why it should take any time. We have the wherewithal to get it done, and we're going to get every single thing you need. 
and I'm going to make sure the federal government do does what's needed. At the state's request, four FEMA search and rescue teams are working here in Kentucky right now. For those without power, FEMA's already provided 61 generators. The Army Corps of Engineers has a temporary power install teams to ready to assist if needed. And we've provided critical supplies thus far, and a lot more to come. 144,000 liters of drinking water, 24,000 meals, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I just 74,000. And look, thousands of cots and blankets. There are seven, seven shelters open in Kentucky, which are now taking care of 300 occupants, but a lot more is going to occur. Of course, housing is a key. Because of COVID, we want to make sure people are out of those shelters as quickly as they can because of COVID. And ultimately, we want to start to provide some certainty for people. I've been involved in responding to a lot of disasters, and you can see it in people's faces what they're really looking for. And look around, I say to the press, what they're looking for is just to be able to put their head down on a pillow, be able to close their eyes, take a deep breath, go to sleep, and make sure their kids are okay. That's what people are looking for right now. But a lot of hard work is going to happen in the next two and three months to bring it all the way back. And so, folks, the governor, I want to, Gov, I want to provide you the certainty as well. I just uh, approved the request that I, I wasn't sure I had the authority to do, but it turns out I do. The government's going to cover 100 percent of the cost, 100 percent of the cost for the first 30 days for all the emergency work, from clearing everything to every single cost the federal government's going to take care of. And uh, it includes debris removal, cost of overtime and law enforcement, emergency service personnel, and shelter. And that will get you through. And by the way, I want to thank your wife. She started a toy drive for this part of the state to make sure how, how many – come here. I, I'm, I'm taking credit for something I have nothing to do with. How could but, you? But tell, tell them what you got so far. Well, as of this morning, we think that we have around 20,000 gifts donated, and we've got three more days to go. 20,000 gifts, so no kid's going to go to sleep wherever they get to sleep tonight without a gift. God love you. And look, uh, we also need to recognize that people have suffered mental and emotional injuries. The cost of this sometimes are unseen and unknown. You know, you, have, you know, people talk about post-traumatic stress in the battlefield as I travel through Afghanistan and Iraq. Well, guess what? There's a lot of post-traumatic stress that comes from lying in your house and all of a sudden the roof goes blowing off and you wonder whether your kids are around. I really mean it. So, uh, you know, with the shock of losing a home and a business, the grief of losing someone, it's happening right before the holidays, as I said, and we're going to make sure that you have all the help you need, including the kind of mental help that's needed to help people through difficult times. And folks, uh, you know, the uh, FEMA has opened mobile disaster recovery centers in Mayfield and in Dawson Springs, and it has disaster survivor assistance teams on the ground here in Kentucky to help people register for assistance. As I said when I talked to the governor, not only that we're going to get what you need, we're going to make sure you know everything's available because you don't always know all that is available all that is available. And that's what we're going to do. And folks, you know, uh, if you live in affected areas, which all of you are standing here watching me do, you know, you visit disasterassistance.gov, disasterassistance.gov, or call 1-800-621-FEMA. That's 1-800-621-3362. I promise you, you're going to heal. We're going to recover, we're going to rebuild, you're going to be stronger than you were before. We're going to build back better than it was. And when I come back, I got one beautiful lady and her husband promised me a meal. She's apparently a hell of a cook, so I'm coming back for the meal. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And to all the families here, keep the faith. We're going to get this done, I promise you. The governor's not walking away. Your county judge is not walking away. Your congress is not walking away. No one's walking away. We're in this for the long haul. Thank you very much for your patience. Not now. We, we don't need it yet. We don't need it now. You know, there has been, because of weather disasters, just this year, over $99 billion in losses. $99 billion in losses. 
And as I flew over, I was telling the folks here, as I was out with the governor of California and Idaho and other states, as you fly over those territories for the better part of an hour, looking down, every single solitary thing is leveled because of the fires. Nothing there. The forests, the homes, the businesses. And guess what? So much area has burned this year because of weather and climate changes that is larger than the entire state of New Jersey. The entire state of New Jersey. That's how much land has been burned to the ground. So we got a lot to do. We got a lot to do, but the American people are ready to do it. This is the United States of America. There's not a darn thing we can't do. Thank you.